The idea with this type of fishing is, um, you know, we, we're fishing off the surf and we're fishing in quite a, quite a surf zone where there's quite a lot of waves and um, you need to get your bait out quite far. And um, these fish seem to feed on the back of a, of a sandbank. And with that, it means that you've got to get quite a big bait into the right body of water. And that always takes a quite a specific outfit. You know, we fish with quite long rods, quite heavy tackle, and you, you got to try and balance it out, the, the heaviness of your tackle, I mean how thick your line is and how heavy your trace is and all that terminal stuff, to also to see what you can actually cast um, that distance to get your bait in the right uh, body of water. So it ends up being quite technical. But what we do is uh, there's a few little techniques that we use to try and help us along the way. And one of them is the, is the dingle dangle technique. And that basically is you, you build a bait in an aerodynamic um, design which, uh, which has a thing called a dingle through it which is basically a wire piece with a loop on the end and you design your bait in an aerodynamic um, way that when it goes through the air it's actually hooked onto your sinker um, and it sticks together. So you don't have the resistance in the air with the bait sort of swinging around all over the place and the sinker going in the other direction. So when you hook it on like that, you cast it and it goes quite a long way. Um, so all these different little tips and techniques help you get that nice big bait in the right body of water to target that nice big species. Well, the, the idea behind bait fishing, especially for these species, is to to activate some of their feeding senses. When there's low light conditions like this, or when the water is quite brown, you want to fish with a bait that's got a lot of scent and a lot of smell. So what it does is it, as it lands in the water, it obviously lets out a lot of smell and a lot of oil. And those currents in the sea will carry that scent in the water column to a certain extent. And those fish, when they're activated to feed, their senses are all working and they'll pick up that smell the vibration of the bait rolling on the ocean bed floor, the smell that's coming through the current, and basically all you're doing is you're putting on a very ugly, smelly bait that looks quite good. And with the swell and the surge, that will roll on the ocean floor, and that smell will get out in the currents. And when he's lying there and he's waiting for some food, and all of a sudden he picks up that smell, he will follow that all the way to come and eat it. And uh, basically he'll arrive on the bait by just sitting on it, and you'll and you'll start munching it and um, and then from there hopefully you'll, you'll start swimming away and that's when you can set the hook so a lot of smell a little bit of vibration but uh, we want to attract that big sand shark there's really not much better when it comes to rock and surf fishing when you've casted your bait out and you're waiting and the sea is quite nice and the conditions are quite good and all of a sudden with the braided line because it's so direct and it's so uh, you know there's no stretching and you can feel what's going on on the other side of the line and all of a sudden you feel this fish sort of jump onto your bait and you can feel it mashing on this uh, on your bait and then all of a sudden it takes off at a great speed and you set that hook and you on with a good sand shot. Wow. That was a proper bite. Bit of slack line, straight down, and um, almost like a typical sand shark bite. Taking some nice line off the mark. Got to try and hold it a bit. There's a bit of reef at the back. Let's hope we got a bit of luck on our hands. This sand shark fishing is absolutely amazing. Bit sore in the back and the body, but uh, it's too good. Not a giant fish, but lovely to catch. It's just this very aggressive, angry fish. You know, it's built for power and built for speed. The reason why we love targeting them is just because it's a uh, a proper fight, you know, you've got a, a big tussle on your hands. The problem is with this fish, it's not a big fish, 
but it's uh, going with the current and I can't follow it because we've got quite a rocky area that a sand shark might find a bit of rock and cut my line. But if you have a look at it, it's got two dorsal fins and a tail fin. It's got these big mus muscular bodies and it's just really built for power. I couldn't go there because of the rocks. Sorry bro. Just quickly before I put this fish back, um, in the mouth, I'll show you the mouth quickly. It's got a lot of, it's got a very hard sort of plate that's got these little teeth in it. They aren't sharp teeth, but it's almost just like a crushing machine. But in here, in this area here, there are two plates of bone that absolutely act like a crushing machine. So anything that goes into its mouth, like crayfish or crabs or anything that he's trying to eat, he uses his bone to smash it and kill whatever he wants to want, wants for dinner. And it's absolutely a machine of a fish. And this is why it's so targeted in our area and our coastline. But being as it is, it's a beautiful fish. Let's get him back. For me, this is my favorite species to catch. And I love looking after them and getting it back in order. Mr. Sand Shark. Well, that is exceptional. I'm so, so chuffed with that. Uh, just targeting the sand shark and getting a result is phenomenal. They are super powerful and a beautiful fish to catch. Pen, let the battle begin.